Ruta what? What is this thing anyway? It's called the rutabaga, Swedish turnip or Swede for short, and it doesn't look like a potato, but when you cook this, it is going to taste just like soft, starchy, roasted potatoes. Hi everyone, it's Maya from wholesomeyum.com and I make easy, healthy recipes with 10 ingredients or less. And today, I'm showing you how to make rutabaga in the oven. If you haven't heard of this veggie before, it's a root vegetable that's a cross between a turnip and wild cabbage. That doesn't sound very potato-like, but when you cook this, the flavor and texture is going to be very similar to soft gold potatoes, just a little bit stronger in flavor. You're even going to get those beautiful brown edges. But unlike potatoes, these are much lower in carbs, they have far more nutrition, and they make a really great low-carb potato substitute. Oh, and you only need three ingredients and 10 minutes of active prep time to make this. I'm gonna show you just how easy it is. Let's do this. We're going to start with a large sheet pan. You can line this with foil or parchment paper if you like, but this one's pretty non-stick, even though it's old, still works great, and you get better browning if you don't line it with anything. So instead, I'm just gonna spray this with some cooking spray, if you don't have cooking spray, you can also just brush on some olive oil. Any way you grease it is fine. Rutabaga pretty much always comes with this layer of wax on it, so we're always going to want to peel it. Unlike a potato, you never want to cook this with the skin on. The problem is the skin can be really hard and so it can be difficult to peel. So let me show you how I do this. We're gonna cut off the ends first. And I'm actually not gonna do this side yet because that first side was hard enough. So what I'm gonna do instead is, since I have kind of this flat surface now, it was pretty flat on the bottom, but it's flatter on the other side, I flipped it over, and then I'm just gonna slice this. I just sharpened this knife, and this is still difficult. So if you do have a knife sharpener, and yours is better than mine, this would be a good time to use it. This is by far the hardest part of this recipe, I promise. Whew, that was not easy, but like I said, the hardest part and I have heard that some people microwave the rutabaga before they cut it. I haven't tried that yet, but let me know how it goes if you do try that out. Now we can just peel it now that we have these skinnier rings, so it's a little bit easier than peeling the whole thing. If you prefer, you can also use a peeler to peel this. It's especially helpful for the ends like this. Now we have these little discs, and we can cut these into cubes. It is easier than the initial slicing. So I'm slicing this into about three quarter inch cubes, maybe a little more like half an inch. Anywhere within that range is fine. So you'll notice I cut strips first and then I turned it and now I'm cutting in the opposite direction. I'll place these into a bowl. That's where we're gonna add the seasonings for it afterward. The only thing left before roasting is to season this and you season it just like potatoes. I'm keeping the seasoning super simple here, so I'm adding two tablespoons of olive oil. You can also use other neutral cooking oils like avocado oil, anything that can withstand high heat. One teaspoon of garlic. I don't recommend using fresh garlic here because it is going to burn in the oven, so garlic powder works best. And if you like, you can also add other seasonings here. Paprika is common, or fresh or dried herbs would also work well, anything you'd add to potatoes. And last but not least, one teaspoon of sea salt, and half a teaspoon of black pepper. Super simple. Mix it together well so that everything is coated evenly in the spices and the oil. Now I'm gonna transfer this to my prepared sheet pan. And the key here is to make sure that your pan is large enough for all this rutabaga. You want every piece to be touching the pan. So just go ahead and spread out the pieces. Make sure they are really spread out, that way they're gonna get good airflow and they're going to brown and cook evenly. You can also use your hands if that's easier. I often do that. If you can have spaces between the pieces, even better. And we are ready to pop this in the oven. You're going to roast the rutabaga at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure your oven is preheated first and it will take about 25 minutes. You can just keep it in there the whole time, but I actually prefer to take it out about halfway through and flip the pieces over. That way you're going to get more even browning. If you prefer, you can skip this step. It'll just be browned a little bit less evenly. 
The total oven time will vary a little bit depending on how large you cut your rutabaga pieces, depending on the color of your pan, and even your oven itself. But it should look like this when it's done. It should be fork tender, so you can just test with a fork to make sure it's nice and soft. You can already see how golden and tender these look, so much like potatoes, and I'm gonna transfer them off the sheet pan to make sure that they don't overcook. Once I have these in a serving bowl, I like to sprinkle with just a little bit of thyme leaves. I think it adds nice flavor, nice color. You can skip this step if you want or do fresh parsley, you do you. These look so much like potatoes. I'm so excited to try them out. I don't have a main dish with me here, but I'll link some down below in the description for you, just so you have some ideas. Yes. This is comfort food. Soft, starchy, tastes so close to a potato. I can't believe this is only eight grams, not carbs. It really feels much more than that. You know I love hearing from you, so tell me, have you tried rutabaga before? Or have I convinced you with this recipe? I sure hope so. And if you need something to serve this with, this sirloin steak video is perfect. It's going to give you that steak and potatoes vibe.